Hey everyone, Indigo Eyes Art here. The topic for today is what is karma and uh, what are the laws of karma. So this this was uh, the topic where majority of requests came. And from there I could see that there are numerous misconceptions regarding the meaning of the word karma, uh, especially in the Western world and how it applies to our daily lives. Therefore, I decided to bring to you a whole series of mandalas to explain the laws of karma. So thus the use of mandalas will help you grasp the concept of karma and how it can transform uh, your life to your advantage in an easy and interesting manner. So the process of uh, uh, drawing and coloring it will uh, bring more clarity to you in comparison to just reading an article or watching a video. So storytelling along with creating the mandala, as I'm doing right now, it has been my uh, most successful method to help everyone understand the full concept of karma, which is otherwise a, a bit of a difficult topic to explain. So you know by now, um, that drawing a mandala with a particular intention fulfills that goal uh, by bringing you the results you are seeking. Thus, I'm especially using mandalas for the whole series as this is the shortest and surest way to instill the required qualities in uh, yourself, thus bringing an inner transformation. And when this happens, it leads to change in your outer circumstances in accordance with your desires or the intentions you placed before you started drawing the mandalas. So, as I always say, please don't take my word for it. You should try it out just like a scientist and then decide from there uh, what works and not for you. Of course, you can always contact me to explain or for questions. So what does the word karma mean? So first of all, I'm going to remind you again, the romanization of the Sanskrit or the, and the Hindi languages by the British. So the word is not karma. The word is, there's no A in the end. So the word is karam or, so karam in Sanskrit or kam in Hindi. And the word literally translates to, is to do or an action. So doing any kind of action is called kam or karam. So contrary to the common belief that karam means punishment, it does not. It is a philosophy of being mindful of our thoughts and actions that cause a gradual inner transformation so we can truly become the best version of ourselves and live the most fulfilling life we desire. So. Therefore, it's said that karam determines our life or what the future brings to us or, or it decides a destiny. And so having said this, it's no brainer uh, because our actions always dictate what we create for ourselves. For example, if somebody decides to steal and it would go under a category of bad karma, that's a wrong deed, we know it could take you, take the person to prison in contrast to another person or he himself being honest, hardworking, which will create a bright future. So in order to explain the law of uh, Karam, it has been broken down into 12 different laws. Like I said, it's an elaborate topic and it becomes complex otherwise. So our final mandala would be the law of Karam to see how all these 12 laws come together to help you understand the entire concept of karma. So, today's goal is to learn about the law of connectedness or connection. This law states we are all connected energetically to the universe and to each other. And I'm sure that you hear this phrase every day lately, but Exactly like the word karam, uh, it this has this is this is also poorly understood and has not been described very well either. So I'm going to try explaining in a couple of different ways. I can uh, so the first part we can say is 
we all have a part of divine within us and there is one perfect being that's the divine energy this means all of us are therefore connected to each other as we have uh, the same part of the divine uh, at the basic level so if i were to explain this law as a genesis i would say all of us on earth have dna that contains only four letters in it a t g c so these are called the base pairs and i always find it extremely fascinating that just the four letters have arranged and rearranged in a way that no two humans are alike in the world other than of course the twins which is a different story and of course the individuals again they are also unique so so if you look at the scientific theory the, at the most basic level we are again all connected to each other rather we are like a everyone of us is in the same family a big family okay so you will be extremely surprised if i told you that the genome of the fruit fly that is drosophila melanogaster it is 60% homologous to that of the humans and 75% of the genes responsible for human diseases they have homologs in the in this fruit fly and these disease pathways are highly conserved in this insect okay so that is a little fruit fly we are the humans however look at the connectedness talk about oh we are connected to each other at what level so you can understand the law of connection either way divine the energy the quantum physics genetics but all these different methods they give the same basic message that we are all one and connected to each other meaning our sacred self that is the higher self or the subconscious is usually uh uh is the other name for it uh it recognizes that we are all one so in hindus for example our greeting to each other is namaste it means the divine in me bows to the divine within you we fold our hands and we say namaste okay so you're going to say why don't we feel connected i mean we can tell we don't feel connected with each other in the same way as we would in our own uh, family so we feel separate from others because we start seeing the world with the eyes of ego self this leads to uh, a separation or a competition also that is i i is the ego self i'm better than anyone else or that i or my desires all my desires should be met i don't care about the rest of the world so when this ego word i comes in it leads um it um, leads the way for grief dissatisfaction to enter our lives so however if you start looking at others with the feeling of love an internal transformation starts to take place in you why is that it's because the frequency of happiness or being kind your energy will vibrate at a higher level than the usual frequency and this leads you to be uh, more happy than or happier and peaceful at all times without any particular outward reason so you're not dependent on anybody or a reason to be happy you just are and your joyful energy is now being radiated all around without an expectation of some reward in return so thus here comes the law of karma or karma your actions create a corresponding energy that comes back to you many times more in quantity and so your world the things and the people around you they start changing by themselves to match your frequency of vibration or your intentions desires and actions so this is the gist of law of connectedness so carl jung had written uh because he 
uh, he used to draw mandala every day for himself and analyze for the patients. He had written that the energy of the central point is manifested in the almost irresistible compulsion and urge to become what one is. Meaning, just as every organism is driven to assume the form that is characteristic of its nature, so no matter what the circumstances, for example, if a human baby is born, it is going to grow into a human and not change uh, into, you know, some other form. So this center is not felt or thought of as the ego, but if one may so express it, it's the self. And look at the center of the mandala. Where did it start from? Buddha himself appeared in the mandala at the focus of our mandala because center, center is the focus of, of uh, where you start to draw the mandala and uh, everything else falls into place around it. And so uh, Buddha appearing in the center, he's proving what Carl Jung said. And while, when I wanted to start this whole series, I wasn't sure how the laws, or especially for today, the law of connection uh, will be demonstrated in a mandala. However, as usual, I leave all this to subconscious because this is the one major rule of drawing an intuitive art or mandala that we are not going to use the conscious brain, but our subconscious will do the work. And it, this has never failed to amaze me and you will see the same thing. So for today, when I meditated, only two symbols showed up that depict the true essence of law of connection accurately and beautifully. Uh, yes, I'm very excited about it because number one, Gautam Buddha appeared and as, as the central energy of the mandala. And secondly, uh, I've never done this art, what you're seeing around uh, Buddha, a folk art called Varli uh, that came in my mind that I've never painted before. It is a tribal art from the state of Maharashtra. It lies between Central and West India. And so this tribal art, it only, it represents and talks about human dependence on each other and association with nature. So, um, so Warley paintings depict a sense of uniformity in the people and highlight, they highlight the close social relations within their community members. So this art and its legends talk about the connected life and its movement. So very appropriate for today's mandala and I didn't even have to do anything and I learned um, an interesting, uh, you know, um, an interesting art. Um, and this, this always throws me off that every time, no matter how many mandalas I've drawn in my life, but every time it just happens by itself if you leave it to your subconscious. So the deep feeling of early people is rightfully summed that there are human beings, there are birds, animals, insects, and so on, but everything moves day and night. So what is life? Life is movement. Now around the inner mandala that is where Buddha is sitting, you are seeing all these worldly people and uh, they are happy and you know it seems like festivities are going on however this is not a celebration or a thing of just an evening these people actually live this law of connection so what you're looking at if you can see that i mean if you look at the whole scene the image shows true and real happiness and what that means is that this is a constant state of internal joy these people feel connected to each other as you would to in your own family they help each other as their own they're genuinely happy at the uh, success of others in the community so the image truly represents the law of connectedness and the feeling of a 
community and that, that this whole community is one big family. So uh, I hope you have a better understanding of the word karam. And this was a very brief introduction I gave for karam because we would be discussing um, it in detail in, the, in our last mandal. And uh, uh, the first law that today we discussed is the law of connection. So hopefully it is much more clear than, um, than what you knew uh, before we started this. So, um, and the other thing the law of connection also says is that, so connection, yes, with the people, the community, the plants, the nature. However, it also means that our past, present, and future are connected because every step we take, every moment of the day, it decides the next uh, moment of our life, right? So, meaning, um, again, no brainer, and this is no just a belief. We know that whatever we decide to do today, we will have the consequences or we will build our um, future from there. So if you enjoyed this video, you could give it a like and uh, subscribe to my channel um, because this keeps me motivated to make more videos with the interesting topics for you or the topics that interest you um, rather than I thinking what everyone would like. Um, so um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free. As I always say, you can email me, you can message me or you can even write in the comments and we could discuss those. Um, so I'll see you next Monday with the another law of Karam. And like I said, there are 12 laws. So for the next, for the next 12 weeks, we'll be having, you know, 11 more mandalas. And um, so have fun making your mandala or try making these stick figures, the worldly art. It's pretty, uh, specific, like I said, to the Central India. And uh, have fun and bye for now. Mm -hmm.